the rest of the story. Yes, there is a seedy section of Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Deuce District. Dollar a night flop houses and grimy saloons. One such establishment is La Mapola, a bar with a dirty red and green neon sign out front and a fist fight inside every Saturday night, and it's Saturday night, January 31, 1976. The argument explodes from a poker game. Ernie is cheating, one declares. Ernie calls the other fellow a liar. The men have been drinking a lot. So they start swinging. Ernie lands a good one on the jaw of his accuser and then goes to the men's room to wash the blood off his knuckles. But the fight is not yet over. When Ernie returns, he sees the flash of a six-inch knife blade in the gloom. The man holding the knife, the man Ernie had punched out, is being goaded by others in the bar. Finish it, they are yelling. And so he lunges with the knife. Ernie tries to take it away from him. But as he reaches, the knife plunges into his stomach and then into his chest. And by the time Ernie arrives at Good Samaritan Hospital, he is dead. And thus, 15 years ago, was extinguished the life of a Phoenix appliance store delivery man who was also an ex-con, who was also suspected of dealing drugs, and whose 34 years on earth would hardly be worth remembering were it not for the rest of the story. You see, when Ernie was 23, he raped an 18-year-old girl. He pulled her off the street into his car, took her out into the desert, and raped her. The police regarded the girl's story with suspicion until her brother-in-law, purely by chance, spotted the car that she had described on the street, and Ernie was driving the car. And the police nabbed him and questioned him, and Ernie confessed, and it was his confession that sealed his conviction. I said it was his confession that sealed his conviction. A jury of nine men and three women found him guilty of kidnapping and rape 20 to 30 years in the state pen, but he was out in eight. And by the time he was out, he was famous. Because Ernie's first trial had been declared a mistrial. Stay with me now. The police officers who had questioned him about the abduction and the assault on the teenage girl, those officers had not first apprised Ernie of his constitutional rights, so the United States Supreme Court made Ernie a big shot in the slam and eventually on the streets. He'd be stopped for speeding, for example, but instead of his driver's license, Ernie would flash faded newspaper clippings about himself to the traffic officer. Well, now you know where it all ended. In a dive in the deuce one winter night with two jabs of a knife. But the strange thing is, they never caught Ernie's killer. He simply fled into the night. And 15 years later, he is still at large today. And one has to wonder how hard they're looking for the murderer of the man who made cops all over the country carry that card that little card that says you have the right to remain silent and so on and so on and so on in who knows how many languages. The legal result of the Supreme Court case that forever will bear the name of a no good Ernie Ernesto Miranda. But now you know the rest of the story.